Hello everyone and welcome back to Whimsy Creek Art. Okay, today is episode two of our beginner paint pour series. And this is the series that will be every day of the month of May, a new video each day. Today we'll actually have two videos and you'll see here in a moment why. But today's video is gonna be all about mixing the paint and just about the paint, how to mix it and the consistency of the paint you want and all that good stuff. And then the next video will be our very first paint pour with the paint that we have mixed. But I am gonna split it up into two videos and this video is just gonna be how to mix the paint. And if you missed the first episode, that was yesterday's episode, and that was on the supplies, all the supplies that you are gonna need, the exact paint, the exact supplies you would need to follow along with me this month. Okay, so for today's paint pour, and this will be our very first pour of this series, I chose some colors that really play well together. Now, a lot of colors with paint pouring, certain colors, um, I can get them to play well because I'm a little bit more of an advance. For a beginner, blues are great colors to like start with. They play very well together. Um, things like green and purple, because they're the opposite on the color wheel, at times can be um, hard to get to play well together and can make kind of what you would say called, it would make mud because it makes kind of a brown in certain pores. Now, as we progress in the month, I will explain and teach you all how to pour with purple and green or other colors, for instance, that maybe don't play well together. But for this beginner pour, I'm gonna show you ones that just really work well together. So we're gonna use some of our Key West, some of our Sky Blue, some of our Admiral Blue, some of our Laguna, and some of our Gloss White. Okay, these are all Apple Barrel, and the supplies were all in the first episode, the first video of this series. Okay, so this is the 8-ounce um, bottle of the uh, Key West color. And so let me get this open here for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna use about one ounce. So this is the eight ounce bottle. That's about one ounce here. And these smaller bottles are two ounce bottles. So we'll actually put about half. And I just, I leave the thing on and just unscrew it. It's just easier to get it out that way. And a good way to make sure you're getting it um, the right amount you would want is to bring it up to eye level and you can kind of see how much paint you have in there But we're gonna do um, and this is a Laguna real pretty kind of turquoise uh, teal color and So we're gonna do one part paint to two parts of our Floetrol But first let's okay. So for the gloss white for white, I'm gonna put um, about half this bottle. So just a tad more of the white. I just don't want you to waste the paint because this is going to, the same paint that was on the supply list is going to last us for many, many pours for these projects. All right, so now we have our flow trowel. You're going to need to shake your flow trowel really well um, an hour or two or a day or two before you go to pour. Don't shake it right before you pour because then you're gonna have a bunch of air bubbles. But shake it up like an hour or two before you're getting ready to mix your paint. So I have my one part paint in there and it's all about, about an ounce of paint. Let's just say to keep it easy for everybody to pay attention, to be able to eyeball it, you don't have to have exact. Some people get all crazy and get into measuring it and everything and really honestly you don't need to measure it or any of that let's just keep it easy we've got one ounce of paint in all of them all right so now we're gonna put about two ounces of Floetrol so one part paint two parts Floetrol so even if you don't have your one ounce just always remember keep that ratio one part paint two parts Floetrol Another great way to eyeball it, make sure you have the right amount, is to bring it up to eye level. Eye level, you can see if you've got 
the one part paint, two parts flow trolley a little bit easier than you can. And you don't have to be exact. You really don't. Try to get it close, but you, you people go crazy trying to get this exact. Don't worry about getting it too exact. Okay, so we're getting each one of these. We're getting some flow trawl in there. Okay, let me get the lid on the flow trawl. Set that aside, and then you get mixing, mixing, mixing. Now, this is one thing that I do keep mine pre-mixed in the squeeze bottles. Uh, many different reasons. You don't have to mix it each time. It gets very tiring on your wrist when you paint every day like I do. And then also, I like to save on the plastic and the, the um, stir sticks and kind of save the environment. And save the budget and not have to use them as much because you mix it right inside the squeeze bottle. But for a beginner, we're going to go ahead and do this so you don't invest in those squeeze bottles and all that till you see if you kind of like it and everything. But if you like it, then you can always invest in the squeeze bottles and then not have to worry about um, these cups. And one way to save on the budget and the environment is, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, go ahead and reuse these cups. You can let the paint, um, make sure it's just, uh, you've poured all the paint out and it's just what little bits are left in there. And then you can let it dry, let it completely dry, and you can just reuse it right on top of that, or you, these are kind of flexible, and you can kind of flex it and then get the paint to peel right out. So please do what you can and reuse, reuse, reuse when you can. Because this um, craft, this art, you can reuse a lot of it. You can reuse the stir sticks. You can reuse the cups. I do have a video all about being environmentally friendly. And a bunch of different ways you can try to be environmentally friendly while paint pouring. All right, well, I'm going to mix these all up and then I'll come back when it's, they're all mixed up. Okay, I've got those all mixed up. So when you're mixing them up, you want to make sure you get all the sides, scrape along the sides, get the bottom real good where you got the paint. And the consistency you're going for is like warm honey, melted ice cream, crepe batter, um, any of that kind of consistency. You want to be able to pick your stick up with paint on it, let it flow off and it flows into a steady stream. And when it falls across the top, you wanna be able to see it for just a moment lay across the top before it sinks down in. It kind of ribbons across the top. And that's the very good consistency. And I do have another video all about just a video that's all about the consistency of the paint. And I'll add a card up above. So all my four colors came out to really just perfect consistency. Don't need to add any paint. We're good to go. Now the white, it doesn't quite stream off of there. It is just a tad bit too thick. So what I have is I have some water in a squeeze bottle. You guys can have a cup of water, a bottle of water, whatever you need, but you need very little, so be careful. So I only want to just put just a little, just, just you know, just a little, because it was almost there. Just depends on how the thickness of your paint. Now you can always keep thinning it, but you can't thicken it back up. So always add a little bit at a time till you get there, because you can always keep thinning it but there's no way of thickening the paint back up to the right consistency. So make sure you scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, get that water mixed in there very well. Try it again. Okay, it streams off there. It lays across the top without being too thin where it just sinks in. It, it kind of, all right, perfect. So now we have the consistency of the paint we want. And so, this is episode two, mixing the paint. Episode one was the supplies. And next will be our very first paint pour. Okay, that'll be coming up next. Episode three, a dirty pour.